There are a lot of solutions out there for creating your own custom forms, but sometimes those out of the box solutions just won't meet your needs. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom form or application that is completely your own. You can customize it to your liking and integrate it and extend it as you need. We're gonna build this inside of Glide Pages and here's what it's gonna look like. So this is a multi-step form and basically you have different steps. This first step is all about contact information. We're going to enter in information here and then continue. That brings you to the second step of the application. While you're going through it, you can go backwards. Like I can go back to this page and continue forward. But if I try and continue without entering in some of the information, then I get this form incomplete error. So I have to enter in stuff. And then once I complete it, I can go to the next page and so on and so forth. So once they complete everything, then the button says complete and submit. And this is when it would actually submit the application to like our Glide database. And then it shows a success message saying, hey, everything looks good. Like press okay. And now the form starts completely over. If you want to join me and create that for yourself, just keep watching. And if you watch until the end, I'll show you where you can copy that exact template you just saw and use it for your own purposes. Just plug in your own questions and you'll be off to the races. Let's get started. So we'll go ahead and start off with a, a new project. We'll just call this a uh, three step form. We're going to do this in Glide Pages. And Glide does have a form template, but that's just a single page form. So we're going to be creating a multi-step. And I like to start from blank just so that I have control over everything. And we're gonna be using uh, Glide uh, tables as the data source for this. All right, so to get started, I like to usually start with where I'm gonna be storing data and then build out the design from there. So for storing data, we can go over to the Glide data editor and we can see in the kind of basic template, Glide gives us a user's table. And these are all people that can log into the app and then they give us an empty table. So I'm gonna leave this user's table for now and we can work from this empty table. And I'm gonna call this uh, form. And this is just gonna be the form, or maybe we call it like form entry. This is where people are gonna be entering in information. So one thing to note is when you're entering in data in Glide, it is literally updating like a cell here. So if we were to point this home page to the form entry page, and put in like a text entry field. And I type in something here. We go back to the data. It's like literally typing something in. So where we run into an issue with this is if I'm on the website and I'm typing in something and Andre comes to the website, and he's typing in something and Gannon comes to the website and he's typing in something, we end up overriding what each other are typing and maybe like someone else will see that with the way this is currently set up. So the way that Glide solves that problem is through what are called uh, user-specific columns. And so I'm gonna come over here and create a new user-specific column for name. And it looks just like this, except I'm gonna check this box called column is user-specific. It's gonna be text. And now we see that this one is has like blue. The, the text there is blue instead of white. And now this is user-specific, meaning like I'm gonna go, let's go in here and do this again. And let's point this one to that new column. We'll do test. So now if we come look at the data, something is there and test is there, but if we switch profiles, so somebody else has logged into the app, now something is still there, but Tamsin hasn't entered in anything there. But if we go back to Marie, then something's entered there. That's user specific columns. And that's the most important thing about making this multi-step form or doing like dynamic data entry and then saving it later is we have to use user specific columns. So I wanted to explain that up front and then we can get into creating the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these extra columns that are not user specific because we're not gonna be using those. Let's get into actually creating this form. And the first thing I'd like to start out with is the like, one, two, three step process. So you're on step one, then you're on step two, and you're on step three, and so on and so forth. The first thing we need to do is have a place to store that. And so we'll just, we're gonna create something called step, and it's gonna be a number type column. It has to be user specific so that we're not overriding each other's data. There we go. And then we can come into the design piece, and I'm gonna add a container. And then in that container, let's add some text. And so we'll do, just say, call this step one. And then below that, let's add some buttons so that we can go back and forth. And I'm just gonna need one button for this first step. And we'll just call this go to step two. Let's move these over to the end. So go to step two, that looks good. We have a step. Let's style this container as a card and let's start there. 
So now what I want to do is duplicate this. So we'll make this a step two. This button, we'll just call this submit. I think I called it complete and submit before. And then finally, let's do a step three, which is going to be like our, our thank you page. Thank you. And we'll just say, okay. So it's really a two-step form with the thank you page, but there's three steps in the process. All right. So what we want to do is dynamically show these containers based off the step number. We want this step to show if the step value is empty or that number step is empty, meaning there's no value in there, or if step is equal to one. So right now this shows because the step value is empty. And I can flip over to our data right here and see that step is empty. For container uh, number two, what I like to do with these actually is do step one for the container. Just so when I look over here, I know what I'm looking at. Step two, and then thank you. Just so we can all see that there. All right, let's change this to only show when step equals two. And then finally for thank you, we'll do a similar thing where step equals three. And so now only step one is showing. And so now if I want to proceed, I can update this button here to update that step value to proceed to the next step. So on the button action, I'm gonna create a new action and we'll call this go to step two. And the action itself is just gonna be what's called a set column values. And this just is like setting a value in the table. And we're gonna set the step number to two. So if I wanna go to step two, then I need to make that step number two. And so now if I click on this, we now see step two, simple enough. And so I can do a similar thing for the step two button. So let's change this and we'll call this submit form, set columns. And for this, we're just going to step three. Now we can save that, perfect. And then for now, let's just for okay, let's do an action. So set columns again, and so here, we will set the step value to clear that out. And so now we should go back to step one and then we can just proceed through this, just back and forth. So that's the premise of making a multi-step view is we're storing a single value that's user specific and we're updating that value. One thing I had in there as well was a back button on one of these steps. To do that, we just add a new button and we can call this back and the action will just be set column values and it would just be the step number previous. So here the step number would be one and I can move that one up just so it's on this side. And so now I can toggle back and forth between step one and step two. Cool. So now we have this dynamic step thing, but we still have a lot to do. So we, we need to enter in data. We need to save data. We need to add validation. So there's a lot more things to add to this to make it a, a fully functional form. So I think the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and add in the data that we're going to be adding. I think let's do it this way. So for step one, and I'm going to use the kind of, I don't know what these are technically called in the slide, but the, I call them folders. So step one name. And so right now we're adding placeholder fields for where we're gonna be entering in data. So I'm gonna add another column. We'll do step one email and columns user specific. Let's make this column an email column. And then let's add something for step two. So for step two, let's say that this form is like a question. So they have a question, step two, and then step to anything else. So they can, add, they can ask a question and then they can add something else. So let's keep it really basic. So in each one of these steps, we'll have two kind of text entry style values. So now for something to show up on step one, all I have to do is add it in this container. So I can do a text entry field and I can just drag it over here. And it also had an email value. So I can do an email entry. Cool, so the first value they have to enter is a name. And then they're entering in for step one, an email. And then we can go to step two. Let's go ahead and add in those fields as well. So the text entry, this is gonna be their question. And then I can just, since this is the same type of entry, I'm just gonna duplicate that using the duplicate button and then point this to be anything else. All right, sweet. So now we have a, a way to enter in the data. So I can enter in like my name and Darren at test.com. I can enter that stuff in. But let's go ahead and add some validation so that I can't proceed if I don't actually fill in this information. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. The simplest way in this case is we can do it inside of the custom action. So since it's just two fields, we can just actually go to the action on the button and this plus icon above the actual um, action tiles is where we can add validation. 
So I can actually go up above here and add some conditional statements. And what we can do is say, if name is not empty and email is not empty, then we're gonna proceed. So if there's a name and an email, then we're gonna proceed to the next step. Then we can add an else. So if they haven't completed their name or they haven't completed an email, then we're not gonna proceed. And we're just gonna add in a notification this is gonna be a failure notification and we'll say form incomplete, period. So this is basic validation. We're checking to see if they've entered it in something. If so, proceed. If not, show an error. And so now if I clear out my name, we go to step two, it says form incomplete, add in the name, email, clear that out, go to step two, form incomplete. But now if I add an email, go to step two, boom. So now we're on step two because I did enter in all that information. So we can do the same thing here. Let me style these a little bit more and let's just add in some custom text. So what's your question? Anything else you'd like to add? Let's make this a larger text field. And what I think I'm gonna do is only make the question required. So let's make this in parentheses required. And then the this is not gonna be required. So on that complete and submit button, let's do edit action. Let's add in our conditional statements. And so we're just gonna say, if step two question is not empty, then we're gonna proceed. Else notification, form incomplete, failure. So if they have entered in their question, they can proceed. If they haven't, then they cannot. So I'm gonna try to proceed now. I can't. What is today? That's my question. And now I should be able to proceed. I can press okay. Awesome. So now we have this multi-step form and we're entering in information, but you can see right here, I just completed it and we see that the data is still in there that hasn't been cleared out. And we're also not storing this data anywhere. So let's create a, a place to store this data after it's been submitted. So I'm gonna create a new glide table and I'm gonna call this form submissions. So we have form entry, which is like our temporary placeholder. And then we have form submissions. There are four things that we're storing. And what I like to do is grab a snapshot and just put this on the other screen and then we can go to form submissions. So we have the name, we are storing an email. We have a question that we're storing. Let's keep date in there. So let's just call this submission date just so that we know when somebody asked this question. And we'll add one more column for anything else. Cool, so we have the person's name, email, question, anything else and submission. Now we need to actually store that data in there. So on this complete and submit action, whenever they complete the form, we wanna do two things. One, we want to store all their entry data into that kind of long-term submissions table. And then we also wanna clear out what they've entered in so far. And so that's like a multi-step action. So we're actually just gonna go back to the actions for this button. And so I'll come over here to the button for step two, and I wanna to go to this complete and submit action. We're gonna edit it. So before we go to step three, which is the thank you page, I want to add a new step and it's gonna be an add row. Let me add that above there. We're gonna to add to form submissions. And then I'm just gonna map in this data that we've added. So I'm gonna do step one name, step one email, then step two question, step two anything else. And then the date of submission is actually not down here, but it's up here. We can grab the current date and time of whoever has submitted this. So that is storing the data they've entered. And then the second thing I told you was we needed to actually clear out what they've currently entered. And so for that, I think I'm just gonna update this um, action here. So we're gonna go to step three, but we're also going to clear what they've entered in in the, all these other fields. So we're clearing all those values and then going to step three if they've entered in the required information. So we'll save that and we can test this out with the data that's still in there. So I have name, email, what is today and anything else. I'll just add in some stuff in there. Hello. And now we click complete and submit. We see this thank you page and let's verify that the data was added. So now I'll go to form submissions. We can see here there's a new row. Let me clear out that blank row. New row with my data. And if we get, click on OK, we can see now that all this data has been cleared out. So we have a multi-step form now. We're saving people's entries. We're clearing out the form. The form is fully functional with validation. The last thing we might want to do, and the last thing I have in my template over here that we're working on, 
was a place for ad administrators to review those questions. So I'm going to create a new page and this is going to be, we'll just call this submissions. And I'm going to point this to the form submissions table. And so now this is pulling through data from this form submissions table. So right now there's only one entry. So let's just make this like a table view and we'll show the email question and then the date. So we can see those values. And then when we click into this, we wanted to see details on that. So for simplicity, let's just add in a fields component. And we're just going to add in those different values here. So we had five different things. So we'll just do name, email, question, anything else, and submission date. And just for styling purposes, let's put this in another card container just so it stands out on the page. So it's now in a container. Let's change the style to card. And so now any new submission that comes through will be shown here. And if we click on this, we can actually review all the data in the submission and then follow up on it as necessary. Now, as promised, I want to give you the template that we created in this video. All you have to do is follow the link down in the description and click on copy, and it'll be right inside of your Glide account. So once you have this set up, you'll be receiving submissions through your custom form. But how do you know when people actually submit the form? Have them consider setting up custom email notifications. In this video right here, I'll show you how to set up custom email notifications triggered right from your Glide application. So go ahead and click right there to learn how to set up custom email notifications. Thanks for watching and happy coding.